Jacob's 12 sons were Arameans. Uh -huh. Who was the first Jew? Yehuda. <laughs> he was Aramean. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. <laughs> so every person in our national heritage was a non-Yisraelite Aramean. Now wait a second. Slow down, Rabbi. What happened to the 12 tribes? They went on a vacation, correct. How many years? 430. Wouldn't you love to go on a vacation for 430 years? <laughs> Hello? That was not exactly a full vacation. It was, they had to work their way, to work their way for the price of the tour. They were Avadim bin Mitzrayim, how many years? Abame od Correct. 430 years. Some say 400, whatever. Now, what happened to the 12 boys in the land of Canaan? They started taking and started multiplying. What happens when a boy meets girl? You get a TV soap, docu a mini drama, right? Yeah. Wrong. Yeah. You make it a family. <laughs> you produce a family. So when they started taking brides, the 12 sons of Yehuda, then started getting things that started getting worse. Where did most of those brides come from? Probably Egypt. No, no, no. From Canaan. Where were they living? From Canaan. Where were the 12 tribes, where were the 12 boys of Yaakov living? In Canaan. In Canaan. So most of their wives had what? Pagan, Canaanite influence. You see any Jews so far? No. They produced and reproduced, and how many people settled in Goshen? 75 by the Septuagint and the Birch Hadashah, 70 by the corrupted Masoretic text, depending on what you want to believe, either 70 or 75. Okay? Wait a second. Now what happened to those 75? <coughs> They were producing. And what happened to Joseph? He married a Mitzrite, an Egyptian. So we got a whole bunch of Arameans starting to marry Canaanites and Egyptians. Now you know why the Jewish translation is hiding this stuff. That's right. Because if you tell the average Jewish person that if you trace their ancestry all the way back, they're really Syrians or Arameans, they'll probably they'll, they'll probably sell all their stock and retire and drop dead on Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Faithful Jewish person who we love, we love the Jewish people. I have some news for you. Would you like to be seated? No, I think I'll stand. No, no, no. I think you need to sit down for this one. Yeah. I've done some research and I've traced your ancestry all the way back to Syrian. You really are, you have Syrian, Syrian blood. The Syrians later mixed with the Edomites and the Ishmaelites. You really have Arabic blood. What? What? Yeah, you really do. And a lot, of the, a lot of the Arameans mixed with the children of Jacob and had Israelite blood. And so today, most Jews have Aramean blood. Most. You think we have a problem now in the Middle East? Oh. <laughs> that makes them their brother. <laughs> Wouldn't that change things? You mean I'm shooting my brother? Yep. Why did Yahweh say in the Torah, love an Edomite, reject him not, kick him out not, don't kick him out, love him, because he is your brother. Syria, my son. Mm. The Aramite, the Ammonite, the Moabite cannot come into the congregation of Yahweh to ten generations. But not the Edomite, the Edomite is your brother. And in that day in Isaiah, Yeshayahu 19, it shall be said that Israel is one third a part of the Mishpacha of Yahweh. And in that day it will be said, Egypt, my son, and, and, and the other, uh, help me out, the other one, the other third, my son. Huh? Assyria. Assyria, my son. And what is Assyria? Where was Assyria? North. Modern day Syria. Modern Aram. Yeah. Aram. Aram. So the Assyrians, now check this one out. The Assyrians were basically what? Those that had. Aramaic blood, Aramean blood. The Assyrians in Dameshek or Syria took who captive? The ten tribes of Israel. It was actually brother taking brother captive. Uh -huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, it's not like we've been told. It's nothing like we've been told. Yeah. So again, we're flowing to Aram. Flowing to Aram. So all believers become Yisrael. Now, wait a second. We have all this Aramaic, Aramean and Aramaic blood, Aramean blood. How did the people of Israel come to be? Mm. Ah. 
The Arameans chose Yahweh. They chose Torah. They chose Moadim. They chose Shabbat. They chose the Halachot. They chose Derech HaChayim. They chose Derech of Life. They chose Derech of Tov. They chose, they chose to trust and follow Yahweh. Yes. And their faith changed their nationality. What? That's absurd. That is a religiously absurd statement. Faith can change nationality? No way! The only way in the world that nationality changes is you've got to biologically reproduce into a different nationality and change the nationality through procreation. No. No. Every Israelite that we know and we hold in high esteem today became Israel not by birth because they were birthed into the Aramean society and race. Every one of our fathers, you cannot name one. Well, Rabbi, that's not true. Abraham and Sarah. They weren't Arameans. You're right. They were Chaldeans. How did they become Hebrews? By faith. Go with me to Benetius. When I tell you Yahweh doesn't change, I'm not just saying that to hear myself speak. How do you become Israel today? You come to Miami Beach, you put on seat seat, you join Israel, and your faith Amen. makes you Israel. Cross over. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. And the Jews will try to tell you differently. No, brother. You look kind of dark skinned to be Jewish. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> have we have you been to Yeshiva? Yep. You have learning. Where have you learned all these things? Arameans, Syrians. This is forbidden knowledge. Forbidden. Don't you? You shouldn't be studying this crap. What school have you been to? <laughs> I've been to the yeshiva of higher learning. <laughs> How high? How high you want to go, Bubba? <laughs> Yeshua is the principal. You know Yeshua? Don't mention that name. <laughs> is the principal. And the Ruach HaKodesh is the teacher. He taught me all this stuff. That's right. So the Jews didn't become Jews by, by, by having sex with other Jews. Wow, what a revelation. So Israelites don't be don't produce Israelites. Faith produces Israelites. Amen. Correct faith, renewed covenant faith, Torah faith, Brit Milah faith, faithfulness to the faith. I'm preaching good today. You might as well buy the tape. Yes. Benatius 15. Benatius 15. Well, Rabbi, where'd you get this boldness? I don't know, sweetheart, somewhere in New York, in Queens. Rifka gave it to you. No, I had it in Queens. <laughs> Part of my New York persona. Uh, some some Aramean. It's part of my some New York persona. I'll show you. But it's just 15 and 7. He said, I am Yahweh who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land so you can produce Jews and the Jews can have the land. No. I am Yahweh who brought you out, brought you out, brought you out. I am Yahweh who brought you out early in the morning. I am Yahweh who brought you out, brought you out. So how, hey, how do we make Jews? We can, we can produce Jews. How? Get them into biblical faith, get them into Torah, and they become part of Israel, and they want to refer to that as the Jewish part of Israel. Uh, have a good day. So then... Now Romans 9 makes sense. They are not all Israel who are Israel. That's right. Ah. Ah. Now it makes sense. Well, Rabbi, that means that most Christians are Israel. No, 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 no. Not so fast. Not so fast. Ah. Go to Revelation 14 so I can slow you down a little bit. Ah, yeah. See what happens? Revelation 14, 12. Rabbi, go in the Bible. Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Standing that too long. That's what We've got to get back to the faith of our fathers and the confession of our faith. Here is the endurance of the Kiddoshim, Revelation 14, 12. 
those guarding the Torah of Elohim and belief in Yeshua made you Israel. So it is wrong to teach that the church is Israel, and it is wrong to teach that the church is Ephraim. You should not teach that. The church is not Ephraim. Because they don't have the endurance of Yeshua, which requires a twofold manifestation of both loving Yeshua and guarding his command. And neither should you call Jewish Israel Israel because they have the commandments of Yahweh, but not the faith in the blessed eternal only begotten son of Yahweh, Yeshua Hanotri. Neither house is Israel until they become Israel by faith. Biblical revelation, 1412 faith. And if you don't, if you have Yeshua without Torah, you're not Israel. Church. And if you have Torah without Yeshua, you are not Israel. Traditional rabbinic Judaism. To be Israel, and that's how you can make Jews. That's how you can make Levites. That's how you can make Shemites. That's how you can make Danites. That's how you can make, so that when we preach the news, the Besarot, not only are we bringing individual salvation, we are rebuilding and reproducing and procreating Israel. What kind of Israel? The Israel of Yahweh, somebody. Hallelujah. Because you can't teach different than Scripture. Scripture teaches that Hebrews were only made by faith. How did Elohim make Abraham a Hebrew? He gave him the by grace you are saved through faith. It is a gift of Yahweh, not of yourselves, lest any man boast. You didn't get in your boat one day and start rowing and go, row, 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 Michael, row, 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 your boat ashore, row, 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 and say, I think I'm going to cross over. I tried the Catalocos, I tried the Judaismo, I tried the the Chinese man on the tree, I tried that one. That was for me, I tried. I sat next to him, I got shaved, but I didn't get the ghost. I was looking for a ghost. A holy ghost. So in other words, we got all these plans of man. And Yahweh says, now let me, psst, come here. Let me, let, let's talk. The way I want you to build this nation is the way I build the nation. I didn't have Hebrews and Jews and Israelites and Talmud and Mishnah and Gomorrah to make Jews, to make yeshivas, to make all these things? No. He said, I had a few Chaldeans and a whole bunch of Arameans who I wanted, I told them what it was like to cross over, and they crossed over. Yeah. You know how you became Israel? The day you personally crossed over. You took your Jewish background and you crossed over. You took your, you were in the church and you loved Yeshua, but now you're a daily double. Now you got that second power, that second thing, the Torah, you guard the Torah. And then that day, when, then, when, how, then, when, then, 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 you crossed over. Harsh, that's harsh, Rabbi. No, the day you left the church, you crossed over. The day you left traditional Judaism and the mosque, you crossed over and you became Israel. And here's the mystery, brothers and sisters. Yahweh is in the business of taking Arameans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Koreans, and birthing a nation, not just a spiritual priesthood, royal sacrifices, royal priesthood, spiritual. It's not all spiritual. You gotta take your head out of, your, out of the cloud. He is birthing a physical nation through the restoration of the two houses of Israel. When you understand that our forefathers became Israel by faith, you will understand how you became Israel by faith. It's not by going to the Lubavitch. It's not by taking courses at the Lubavitch. It's not by sitting under the feet of the rabbi. I saw a movie last night. I, 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 oh, gosh, I don't even want to share with you. Oh, come on, Rabbi. Rivka brought home a documentary. Rivka. <laughs> he documented my mentality and mentored my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> about gay Jews and gay Orthodox and oh, the Ay, Ay, oh, I you know. couldn't even bring a bag of popcorn for oh, this film <laughs> <laughs> oh they keep Shabbos and they like the candles and they're Orthodox but they're gay boys gay boys oh no. <laughs> oh no 
So I said, I vet. So Rifka said, what do you think? I said, sweetheart, you know what I think. You're going to tell me that's Israel? Oh, come on. And then they have the gay rabbi get on and say, you know, through this orthodox gay Jewish movement, no we're coming way. to see that there are many ways to read the Torah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on. Oh. We're seeing Torah through a new way. Mm -hmm. Now, are, are those folks Israel? Yahweh have mercy on them. <laughs> Yahweh have mercy on them. Are those folks Israel? They're not all Israel that are Israel. So the mystery of what I'm sharing with you becomes life and reality. It, it, and what was happening, we saw this last night on the documentary. It is a worship of man. I've been, I, I, know, I know enough about Orthodox Judaism. You know what it's you know it all about? It's the deification of man. Yes. They worship the rabbis. They have pictures. They sell pictures. And they pull pictures out. And on every wall there's a picture. Like Yahweh says, no, have a mezuzah. They say, yeah, have a mezuzah and a picture. So every room has a picture of a great rabbi. And then they have sales on the internet. And you can buy on the eBay. They have the sales of ancient rabbis, pictures, and sayings, and writing. It's a worship. We, you know, we make fun of the Catholics, or they sometimes make fun of the Catholics. We do the same thing. Whoa. They worship saints, we worship rabbis. Whoa. It's the same thing. Wow. Oh, and I mean worship. I because if a rabbi says it's okay to be gay and orthodox, it's okay. It doesn't matter what the Torah says. The Torah says you're a sodomite, not an Israelite. <laughs> yeah, but my rabbi said that. What rabbi? The Hebi. Oh, the Hebi said you're a... Oh. <laughs> Yahweh says you're a sodomite. Shh. Don't, don't worry about what Yahweh says. I'm lighting Shabbos candles, and my hubby is a wonderful man. He never threw any homosexuals out of the shul. Oh, that's disgusting. He's a wonderful man. A wonderful man. <coughs> never threw anybody out. Pray. Pray for those folks, of course. Of course. Yahweh has mercy. He cares about them. He sent Yeshua. He cares about them. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Let's close with this. I don't know what I have in Nehemiah here, but it looks good. I'm going to turn there. Nehemiah, give me a page, please. Nehemiah. 9 7. What's that? 834. Nehemiah. In Yeshua's name. Is anyone enjoying? Yes. When you understand that Yahweh really never changes, you go around quoting your dream 13.8, you show the same yesterday, day, forever. Malachi 3.6, I am Yahweh, I change not. When you really understand that, you'll always understand that Israel was produced from Chaldeans, from Arameans, from all the heathens, and they became Israel by faith. They crossed over by faith, and the day they crossed over, they became Israel. Abraham was a Chaldean until he crossed over and became a Hebrew. In other words, you could have been saved for 25 years until the day you started living like an Israelite. You were not a Hebrew or a Jew or an Israelite or part of the chosen people. Right. Can I be any, any plainer? Hmm. You had a mental ascent that had to give way to practical reality so that the Hebraic faith is not a mental ascent to a set of doctrines and creeds. It is a literal embracing of, of, of the truth of Yahweh and his garden and his commandments so that you walk in those things the rest of your life. You know when you became Israel? Mm. The day you crossed over. Yes. Even before you understood two house truth. The day you started seeking the truth and got out of those systems is the day you became an Israelite. Not one day soon. You could be saved and not be an Israelite. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. They are not all Israel who are Israel. Nehemiah 9-7. Oh, hallelujah.